This is really cool. This is probably like a video game. But I think maybe we need a new driving test for this, huh? I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Remove Before Race. I'm your host, Raz, and we have something extremely, extremely special today. You can see it's detecting my presence and it started to turn on. It is one of the most futuristic cars that Mercedes-Benz have ever designed and created. And perhaps the one that is the most forward thinking, not only in the way that it's designed, the way the wheels are, the way the cabin is, but even the way that it drives. And that is something very exclusive and special that I'll get to show you later. It is of course the Vision AVTR, which has been clearly inspired by the movie Avatar of James Cameron's. And of course we're getting the sequels next year, which we're all very excited about. So I cannot wait to show you what this, one of the coolest Mercedes concept cars in the world can do. Let's dive straight in. So guys, Vision AVTR, it is something that is completely different to what you would have seen before in a concept car. And when you look at something like this, you really do think, well, is it actually going to work? And on the face of it, it doesn't really look like it, does it? But this is actually a drivable car, and I will show you that later on. But first, to really appreciate kind of how Mercedes have designed the various bits of this in conjunction, not only with the movie, but nature and this idea of future and forward thinking. Just a quick reminder of the other awesome concept cars that Mercedes have put out in recent times. Now, I do love Mercedes-Benz to my core, so I am a little bit biased about this, but I absolutely love, for example, the Maybach Vision concepts that they had recently, which were a lot more familiar in the way that they are normal cars with wheels, etc but very muscular in the way that they look, both the coupe and the cabriolet. And they are truly, I think, my favorite two concept cars ever. Now, when you look at the AVTR, just generally in its shape from that position, it's very muscular still. Yes, you haven't got like a huge bonnet like in the Vision Maybax, but you have got very, very strong shoulders, both on the front and on the rear. And generally, it's a very aerodynamic looking shape. Generally, you know it's a Mercedes-Benz just staring at it. But as I said, to really appreciate this car, come a bit closer, let's have a look around properly and I'll show you every little bit before we go out and see how this thing actually drives. So guys, here we have the AVTR. We've actually brought it inside of the hangar that we had it in front of just now, just so you can appreciate these LEDs. Now you note the car was sleeping and as we've approached it, now the lights have turned on. Now let's start as we normally would with the front end. That face should in fact look very familiar to you because that is the face of the EQ family. First seen in, for example, the EQC, but more recently seen in the EQS in its gorgeous, gorgeous form, I believe. That is the face of EQ. So that is unmistakable and you'll notice the lines as you get in closer next to the lighted star. And you're gonna see lines like this all over the car. It's kind of like a theme of how the car is powered how it's powerful, how it's kind of sucking in power from nature. That's a nice sight to see that you would find in your normal Mercedes-Benz as well. And the paint finish, very similar to Alubeam Silver, as you would have seen on the SLS of old. Now, as we come around, probably one of the biggest highlights of the car itself, which is the really interesting wheels. Now, these are based on the wood sprites from Avatar. And as you can see in their standard form, they kind of glow blue, which is really quite interesting and they can do all sorts of interesting things. I'm gonna show you some of the safety features later, but they do show different elements as well. So for example, we could show the first one I believe was air, which is showing now. And then we have water, like spring water. You can see it's kind of flowing out. And the one after that is earth, which shows all the colors of avatar and the earth, etc. And finally, the last one is fire, which you would expect to be red, but it's not. It's more like pulsating energy instead, which is cool. Now, of course, this lighted star in the middle as well. And what I found really interesting is in fact, the tire, which is not your traditional tire. Again, those lines looks a bit more organic. And look, you'll see a little Mercedes-Benz star hiding in there like you have in the F1 cars. That brings us then to the really interesting interior. 
you're very much connected to the interior, even outside of the car. You see so much of it. And it's this concept of linking the outside world and nature with the internal occupants. So what we're gonna do is now, we're gonna dive in and check out some of the highlights of the interior. So let's head inside now. We're gonna get the doors open, which is a very cool process in itself. You'll notice straight away, first of all, your typical ambient lighting like you'd find even in today's Mercedes-Benz cars. But this is a very special interior. As you can see, very concept car, probably not all that practical in reality, but what this shows is a two plus two arrangement in a fairly sporty looking car. We've got Dynamica. If you've heard me say that before, you find that in all of your AMGs. It's another word for man-made uh, Alcantara type leather or race techs if you're into your Porsches. So that is what this material here is. But more interesting than that, this rear material is made of like dead fishes. Essentially, it's all recycled. And we've got, this is not real wood here. It does give a very nice kind of boat-like finish that you find in a really expensive yacht or something. But it's in fact rattan like you have on outdoor furniture. And then there's so much rose gold everywhere. And you know, that's a typical sign of uh, Mr. Gordon Wagner and his influence on any bit of Mercedes concept car. But as we said, yes, it's got two plus two design. Now it's interesting, we've got this kind of curvature that goes around the car and there's a line of rose gold that connects the outside to the inside and connects the rear passenger seat to the headrest of the front passenger. And it's this whole idea of connecting the front passengers to the rear and the entire inside compartment to the outside world. So I don't claim to know what that means, but essentially you can get this idea of like nature merging with technology, which is quite cool. Right guys, now we're gonna head inside. Now everything is run by this center merge controller, if you like, that's what they call it, because it merges the driver with the vehicle. Now to wake up the car, all I need to do is bring my hand close to the merge device. And there you will see it's raised. And look at the energy coming out of that, so-called energy anyway and there you see the world of Avatar. Now, this is not a screen as you would normally see it. This is more like, what's that old saying? God does not build in straight lines. This is very much like that. This is a screen that is instead curved, much more like nature. Now you can see the vehicle in there moving through the world, which is very cool, but there's no buttons. So how do you make selections? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna raise my hand here. Then you'll see these selections come up different ones. We're going to choose this one perhaps. And you see, you will find a tree here that was very famous in Avatar. We're going to choose that. You can see the pulse went through the car. And we wind up. Oh, I chose the other one. I chose the mountains. <laughs> We've uh, ended up in the mountains here of Avatar, as you can see. And that is kind of how the selection process works. Very simple. You just go through different selections here. I'm going to show you an animal. It's the Banshee, I believe. And you see the Banshee turned up. Completely different way of interacting with the car. Very futuristic, very forward thinking. Now let's go and check out the rear. So guys, now we're approaching the rear. You can see kind of the flaps waking up. That was pretty awesome, wasn't it? And did you see how the rear light turned on? Now that rear light, again, if you think of the old Mercedes concepts that we've seen, should be pretty familiar. We've got a lighted rear Mercedes star as well. You can see how the ambient lighting kind of hits the floor, almost like a welcome light as well, which is awesome. More interesting in telling you though about these fins, they serve many purposes. For example, aerodynamic purposes, you can imagine them being used to increase downforce. But also let's say if you're braking with the car, look at that, they turn red like a brake light and so do the wheels, which is again, incredible. It's good safety, it looks great, but it also has a function as well. So these, again, inspired by nature, the designer first sketched them and then the engineers got to work on, well, how would this be useful? And well, there you go. Just in what, I don't know, would you call it a diffuser? But you've got these flowing energy lines and these increase in speed the faster you're going. Again, it's kind of a signal to the rest of the world what's happening and really stunning, really something that we haven't seen before. But to really appreciate this is to actually see the car driving. So. Let's jump in right now. 
So guys, here we are inside the Vision AVTR. I'm here with head engineer of the electric drivetrain element, which is Boris. Boris, thank you for uh, showing us around. Hey, nice having you. Thank you. Um, it looks like we're in the future right now. Huh? This is totally. incredible. So can you tell us a little bit about how this works in terms of driving? Yes, sir. Sure. Now we're driving um, our Vision AVTR with the merge controller. So there are no steering wheel, no brake or gas pedal. Yep. It's just um, by placing your hand on this nice device, um, you can brake like a normal car, just pushing backwards, accelerate by pushing forward and going through the corners or tilting it. So it does um, turn pretty directly, doesn't it? Yes, because we got um, steering in front and in back. Yep. And this enables um, driving parallel. I yep. can show you just by turning. Oh, wow. So it's kind of like crab stepping, you guys call it, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. And you told me, which is quite cool, that pulling backward is always it's breaking. It's always breaking, yeah. So there's a separate button for reverse, that's right? Yes, correct. Okay. And then even in that mode, pulling back is still to brake. It's always breaking, yeah, for safety reasons. Which makes sense, because then psychologically, as a driver or a pilot, I guess, um, you always know braking is that, regardless of what you're doing. Right. How long did it take you to get used to it as a driver, like doing this, as opposed um, to... Did it take a few goes to get your mind... I think it will happen in minutes, yeah? It's pretty intuitive. Okay. Um, it's like um, going from an old mobile phone yeah. to a smartphone. Okay. So just device. wise in, in the beginning, it's kind of weird because yeah. it's something new. Yeah. But now, I think you won't go back to an old mobile phone now. No. No. So no. it's pretty the same. And we also can um, combine those things. Yeah. So it feels like you're drifting. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> really looks like you're drifting. And then you get so much view of the world as well, thanks yeah. to like the design of the front. And the glass doors as well. Yeah. You're pretty connected to the surrounding, like an armature. I mean, you do have like quite a large A-pillar, but then it makes up for it with obviously the glass doors, which is cool. It's nice with the iPhone's kind of wide view. You can get like, I can see the, what we see, which is the door there, the door there, the sky. I guess it's also a little bit like a video game, right? Yes. So when you play computer, it's. Yeah. I think you will get used to pretty. Yeah. Pretty fast. Like I'm an 80s, 90s kid, and I used to play with joysticks on the PC. So once you get used to using that, you can get used to using this as well, right? So um, I will stop. Cool. And hand it over to you. Cool. Yeah. I think I'm ready for Let's this. I'm ready for the future. Wow, well, that is interesting. We've got some velocity going, and then we turn it. Ah, oh, now I get it. Now I get it. All right, that's, that's, I'm getting used to it now. Yeah. That's interesting. And then brake. And it brakes pretty well. Yeah. This is really cool. This is probably like a video game. But I think maybe we need a new driving test for this, huh? I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> I saw we we did in our design uh, headquarter. <laughs> did you really? Yeah, it was uh, a full day yeah. of just of driving. Do you get a license at the end of it? Um, no, but there are actually maybe three people for yeah. now um, which are able to drive okay. the car. Can Gordon drive it? Um, yeah, he got also a short introduction. So Boris, thank you so much. Um, for sure. I need to congratulate you. If I could shake your hand, I would, but sadly I can't. Thank you very much. Um, but next time, hopefully, that we meet up. Really great job on this, really impressive. So guys, there's a look at actually driving the AVTR and all of the design of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do like, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you did. I've got a few more things to do here in Germany, as you saw in my vlog. So I'll see you guys next time.